short video, I will explain how ethical conduct benefits everyone and why the university urges you to complete certification in the responsible conduct of research. It may even be that being aware of issues of research ethics is, is good for you. Research ethics is really a lifelong learning about how to handle situations that arise during your professional career. Although nobody wants to be told what to do, you need to have the tools to handle issues and circumstances as they arrive, whether you're a faculty, a graduate student, or on staff. From federal regulations, we know that research misconduct is plagiarism, falsification, and other issues of researchers behaving badly. Specifically, federal regulations such as the 42 CFR define misconduct as fabrication, falsification, and plagiarism. So anything that you submit as a grant or a paper or a proposal or protocol should be checked so they don't contain these things. The National Science Foundation says plagiarism is the major cause of misconduct, whereas the National Institutes of Health have charted the rise in falsification and fabrication that predominates misconduct cases for medical research. The NIH determines this by the lack of reproducibility in studies. Other questionable research practices include bad choices in authorship, limiting data availability, misleading statistical analyses, uh, neglect in the lab as far as supervision is concerned, and even inadequate institutional policies or procedures. Other, th other things such as overlooking the use of outliers or, or not disclosing the change in your research design, this is all not necessarily mi research misconduct, but they are not good research practices. Now, if you do see something that you want to report and you consider as research misconduct, see our companion video on whistleblowing and then refer also to policy E40. A recent trend has been the lack of reproducibility, especially in biomedical studies where even work that was rerun by the original researchers could not be replicated. Common problems were mm, mislabeled samples, lack of blind study or controls, out-of-date reagents, and they've led to poor outcomes and lack of integrity in that research. The Office of Research Integrity investigates cases of reported misconduct from universities, and then it posts these cases on the website along uh, with the imposed sanctions such as the adjudication, penalties, and other actions that are reported by the university. Also, the institution will notify the funding agencies, journals, and other universities that uh, are connected with the misconduct. Now, you might wonder, what is the big deal about misconduct? Consider the sciences and other disciplines that depend on the scientific method and honest reporting of methods and results. This is how we generate and build upon knowledge. For instance, in 1998, the medical journal Lancet retracted a paper that linked the MMR vaccine to the incidence of autism in children. It turned out that the main investigator, Wakefield, had faked data. Beyond misrepresenting medical histories of patients uh, that were in the study, this serious breach in research conduct also contributed to a mistrust of vaccines in the general public and has diverted attention into the real causes of autism. Many parents have declined to vaccinate their children against diseases such as measles and mumps and rubella, uh, which has resulted in um, an increase in these uh, diseases that are easily preventable in both the U.S. and in the U.K. Now, Wakefield also engaged in some serious conflicts of interest. With He had plans to sue the vaccine manufacturers, um, and that these sorts of cases also affect our confidence in science. But also think of the monetary cost of poor ethics in research. For example, it can cost $500,000 to conduct a single investigation into misconduct. The human cost is high too. Uh, as in the last 10 years, over 70,000 patients have been treated by the results described in almost 900 papers that have been retracted. The actions that we now take include uh, recommendations by the National Science Foundation, NIH, and the USDA, and they all mandate that graduate students, postdocs, undergrads, and early career faculty that are supported by these funds must be certified in the Responsible Conduct Research, or RCR. At UNM, we believe this should happen within a year of funding, 
and that certification is good for four years. You can be re renewed as well with a quick module. The ethics education that we conduct is face-to-face. -face. It's a face-to-face -face format because it's just too easy to take shortcuts uh, with online formats such as the asynchronous training. The content matter includes about 12 areas such as mentoring, research misconduct, collaborative research, the scientist is a responsible member of society, conflicts of interest, the use of humans and other animals in research, authorship ethics, publication ethics, data management, ownership, and the reproducibility of a study. All pretty interesting stuff when you get down to it. I invite you to visit the Academic Integrity and Research Ethics website, that's AIRE at UNM.edu, for more information and ab about obtaining um, RCR certification and additional materials for ethics education. The website also contains a number of valuable ethics resources, including a tutorial on understanding plagiarism. There's videos that detail the intricacies of research integrity and some recommendations on ethics and research. There's also links to Authenticate. It's a plagiarism det detection software that we recommend um, that can save you a lot of trouble when you submit a paper to a, to a journal. There's also an online interactive video called The Lab that's presented by the Office of Research Integrity that can help you identify and handle research misconduct. So, as we finish this up, I want to ask, what would you do? As Kutcher and Keith Spiegel noted in their Nature paper in 2010, if you see something, you might want to say something to a colleague, a lab mate, research collaborator. That is, if you observe someone who you suspect is behaving badly, is it worthwhile to go to that person early on and simply ask, what are you doing? This simple action, more times than not, results in stopping research misconduct or other questionable research practices cold. Imagine yourself a hero. Now, please feel free to reach out to me anytime to schedule a private consultation or just, just to vent. Uh, I can provide advice and, and help you take the proper steps to officially report research misconduct uh, if that need arises. So, thanks for watching this video and for your commitment to being an ethically responsible researcher.